Okay, hi Insta. Just going to wait for the audience to build up. I'm also doing it on uh, uh, live stream Facebook and Insta today. So I'm just letting you know, I'm just going to wait for this audience to build up. It's going to be a nice, short uh, Christmas Eve rant. And I just want to welcome people coming in. Hi, Nathan. How are you going? Uh, Real Estate Thomas, John Lulan. How are you going? That's on Insta. Waiting for the uh, people on Facebook to normally join up. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas to you all. Merry Christmas, Peter. Um, and uh, I want to wish everyone, hello, Aaron Paul, congratulations on your great new addition to your family, to you and Laura. Congratulations, Stefan, how you going? Um, hi to everyone, Michael Burgio from Novak, good stuff, thank you so much. Great to see you all, Stephen. Merry Christmas to you all. What a wonderful, wonderful time of the year. Um, uh, Lucas, uh, Luke, sorry, Luke St. Clair from the UK. Uh, and special occasions today, I've got the stone and wood. Mm. Hello, Matt, how you going? Hello, Jay, how are you? Okay, we got LJ Hooker Strathfield joining in. Fantastic, Georgie Soros. Yes, the John Travolta look tonight. I decided to wear a white jacket over my black top just to be different. Hello, Lisa, how you going? Federico Fragamatos. From Rain and Horn Petersham. How are you, Alex? How are you going? Merry Christmas to you all. Merry Christmas to you all. And I've just noticed that uh, Johnny Manus has just come on um, the line as well. And Johnny, I have to say to you, mate, today I went in and picked up some uh, cakes um, from his great uh, shop, 407 Enmore Road, Tim's Products, it's called, John Manus. Mate, I have to say to you that Galacto Burica, which is basically a, a Greek custard pudding, absolutely super fantastic. Half of it has already gone. Hey, Paulie Billa, Daniel, how you going? Okay, guys and girls, we're up and running. Great to see the uh, Barfoot and Thompson team. We love you too in Auckland as well. Guys and girls, so we're set. I've got my water which is uh, alkaline, alkaline water. I get uh, boxes of 24 or 48 coming in. Michael Burgio, I should have had the, the pocket square. A nice pocket square would have been absolutely perfect. Merry Christmas to you, Jay. Good to see you all. You're probably sitting around and you've got your families nearby. And today I specifically said I wouldn't swear because I just know that kids are probably not going to go to bed as early as, as and they might be around. Hey, Mark, how are you going? You're probably still overseas. Elizabeth Pavlidis, Merry Christmas from Fiji. Leanne Williams, how are you, darling? Fantastic. She's got the champagne. Fantastic. Mike Nickel, how are you going from uh, New Zealand? My man, love your uh, Instagram uh, updates. Okay, and Arthur Collius, Merry Christmas to you as well. Arthur, Amit, how are you going? Gang, let's get on with the show. So today I'm going to share with you what I believe are seven questions, seven questions that you must ask yourself. And I believe that if you religiously ask yourself these seven questions and you actually get the answers to these seven questions, you are going to have a fantastic year ahead. You're going to have a fantastic year ahead. Uh, but before I go on, I was having my Christmas party with, um, um, uh, I had a, uh, with Susan. So Susan and I uh, went out on uh, two days, three days before Christmas, Susan Zeng, um, who's actually not joining us tonight. She has gone to uh, uh, Ubud, where she is uh, rafting, and she's doing meditation, and she's doing yoga, and she's eating vegan food. Hey, Troisy Malcolm, the auctioneer of the year for McGrath, and my co-host with John McGrath on the Million Dollar Agent podcast. Good to see you, Troisy. And Troisy, guess what? We're drinking a stone and wood. Anyway, cut a long story short, I was sitting down and actually we had the most, uh, 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 our, our, our Christmas party uh, has no alcohol. Our Christmas party is sitting at About Life in Balmain eating vegan healthy food. Um, that's what she likes. And then it is followed by um, a massage and um, that was our Christmas party. But anyway, I said to, I said to Susan um, something, and I want to bring it up to you, because I'd love you know, to get your views on it. And that is, um, 
do, do, you think, do you think people do the best they can? Do you think people do the best they can, you know? And um, Susan sort of looked at me and she said, oh, what do you mean? I said, like, do you, you know, ultimately at a high level, do you think, you know, generally people do the best that they can? And there was a bit of silence there for a while. And she goes, well, sort of, no. And she goes, what do you think? And I said, look, I used to think that they didn't do the best they can, but I think that it's a lot better to think that people do the best they can. And the reason I say that is that if you have a belief that people generally do the best they can, what actually happens is it eliminates you thinking people are dickheads. It eliminates you, you know, feeling like people, you know, um, it, it eliminates you from judgment. When you think that people just do the best they can, you actually have far more compassion and understanding to that people. And it means that you won't go to bed at nights having the shits. So, you know, and then we started talking and she goes like, you know, I go like, what, are your, what about your parents, Susan? What about your parents? Do you think they do the best they can? And she thought about it. She goes, you know what? Under the circumstances, they probably do the best they can. So one of the things I'd like you to maybe think about is, do you judge a lot of people and you go to bed at night and you think to yourself, you know, you know, why are they like that? Why like that? Or do you just adopt that, you know, People just do the best they can. I think my parents did the best they can, right? They still, you know, um, uh, give me the shits, but, you know, I'm not going to blame them and I'm not going to blame them for anything in my life because I just think they did the best they can. And I think that generally people just do the best that they can with their resources. But that's enough on that subject. I just think that it's a, it's a useful belief to have. Um, I want to talk to you uh, a little bit about, you know, these seven questions. And the first question... The first question I'd like to share with you that I think is going to be extremely useful in life. Now, listen to me very carefully. And I believe that this is a critical question. And that is, every time you're doing something, ask yourself this question. If this was easy, what would it look like? If this was easy, what would it look like? And the reason why I like that question is that I just think that when you create things that are complex, when you create things that are fancy, when you create things that require a lot of you know work and a lot of layers, it actually becomes draining. And the minute you get fancy, fancy gets broken. So I think a really good thing, whenever you're designing a product, a service, whenever you're trying to work out a plan. I think a really good starting point is saying to yourself, if this was easy, what would it look like? What would it look like? And I have to say to you, I'll use this approach and this system of thinking in everything, in my social life, in my business life, in my personal life. And I'm going to give you a few examples. For instance, holidays. I think to myself, you know, like on holidays, like, you know, my daughter gave me the itinerary that, you know, she first thought of. And I looked at it and I thought to myself, that's just hard. That's all just hard. And that's going to be stressful. So um, I think to myself, you know, if this, if this break was going to be simple, seamless and not stressful, what would it look like? And I thought to myself, what it would look like, it would be like a minute to the beach, a minute to the restaurants, like not a lot of jet lag like leave my house at 11 and be in the beach at Byron, beach, at Byron Bay at two o'clock. What would it look like if it was easy? Thank you, Phoebe. Melbourne was fantastic. By the way, I just spent three, four days in Melbourne. Loved it, loved it, loved it. So, and there's another example. You know, what would a great holiday look like that would be, you know, easy in Melbourne? Well, it would be at being at Crown and being able to get around without having to have a car. But, you know, holidays are one thing. But, I mean, examples are like in anything. Like, for instance, um, I mean, even in sales, even in sales, like I clearly remember when I was 19 years of age and all I was doing was selling um, uh, barbecues, I, I mean, they had all these extra things that you could go off and sell. And I just knew that it was easy. Make it easy for clients to say, yes, red or green, which one would you like? 
right? Red or green. The minute you start giving people too many options, what actually happens is it makes it difficult for the customer to say yes. So I've just noticed Chrissy Panos, my youngest daughter, has just joined us on Insta. And will everyone, it is her birthday. It is her birthday. Hey, James. Hey, Lisa. Good to see you that you've joined us. Convenience wins. Can everyone please wish Christina Panos, who's just joined us, which I had no idea she was going to. It is her birthday. She was born on Christmas Eve in 2006. Um, um, so Christina, they're all wishing you a happy birthday. And even though you can't see it on Facebook because you're on Insta, I know that you'll be looking at all the comments at the end of it. And she reads every comment when it's got to do with her birthday. So guys and girls, thank you so much. That is Chrissy. She's been on the rant before. You've heard her before. By the way, I do have another daughter, um, except she doesn't like being on my social media. So gang, if this was easy, what would it look like? Great question. The next question I'd like you to ask yourself is this. Whenever you're doing anything, like if you've got a yearly goal, if you've got a yearly goal, ask yourself this question. What would I do if I only had 60 days to achieve this goal? What would I do if I only had 60 days to achieve this goal? Thank you, Lisa. It's the white jacket. What would I do if I only had 60 days to achieve this goal? And the reason why is it cuts through all the crap. It cuts through all the bullshit. And what it does, it helps you make the main thing the main thing. In fact, I've said it before, the main thing is to make the main thing the main thing. And that's what you get. And that's what you get when you actually say to yourself this really pointy question. If I only had 60 days to achieve this goal, what would I do today? And it forces you to go to a high return of investment activity instead of you mucking around with two out of 10 activities. By the way, I've just had a look at this. I was wearing this before. This, by the way, my friends, is called a Muse. I've used it before on the rant. And I have to say to you, it is for me a very effective um, a tool, you know, wearable device. It's a wearable device. And what it actually does is it's the Fitbit of meditation. That's probably the best way to describe it. And um, it comes with an app, of course, which most wearable devices do. And it gets you into the uh, habit and the ritual. It gets you into the habit and the ritual of doing meditation. And it actually measures your brain waves to tell you how low you got or how stimulated you are. And it's giving you biofeedback as it's happening. So it's an extremely useful device. And one of the things I'm going to be talking about in the new year is guys and girls, always ask yourself, are my routines helpful or harmful? I'll repeat it. Are they helpful or harmful? And the reason I say that is that the things you do and the thoughts you have are going to fall into one of those categories. They're either helping your life or they're harming your life. And I have to say that meditation, there's enough evidence to suggest that meditation is something that's going to be helpful. Nathan, it was good to see you this morning as well. And congratulations on your great new venture. And you're a guy that I'm going to be looking out for very intently over the next five years. Um, I pick and stick and I follow people. So number three, number three, I want to talk to you about. This is the next question. Now, this question is the question that I call is the stress buster, the stress buster. And the reason I say it is that sometimes, as I said at last week's rant, we've got a terrible ability to actually catastrophize and awful lies and really, you know, 
put a laser and make this problem that's only a 2 out of 10 problem and make it look like it's the worst thing in the world. In fact, I've said it before that, you know, we lay in bed at night worrying about 99 things, which 94 have got no chance of ever happening. So what I will say to you is that the reason I like this question, and here's the question, here's the question. Will this be a problem in a year? You can further go on and say, will this be a problem in three years? Or will this be a problem in five years? And what it does, it helps you understand not to sweat the small stuff. It helps you to understand not to actually get too caught up and get myopic on an issue that's going to have very little relevance in the future. So, gang, what I'd like to say to you is every time you have a problem, you are to ask yourself this question, will this be a problem in a year? Will this be a problem in three months? Will this be a problem in five years? For instance, you miss a flight, you're stressed, will this be a problem in one month? Will this be a problem in one week? You lose a sale. Will this be a problem next week? You break up with someone. Okay, let's call it a divorce. Will this be a problem in three years time? And that's what I'd like you to do. I want to move on to the next question. And this question comes from that great book, the One Thing by Carrie, Gary Keller from Keller Williams. And he talks about there's so many options that you have in life, but you almost must always say to yourself, good to see you, Tony Williamson from Cairns. And we're going to be doing a lot of work this year, Tony, one of the great real estate oper operators of North Queensland. What one thing, if I executed flawlessly in the next 30 days, would have the biggest impact in my life? What one thing, what one thing, and I call that the push goal, the push goal. And the reason I say it is that a lot of the times you might have three or four goals, but one of them, if you nail that, affects all the other goals. For instance, for me, back in 2009, when I set all these goals, and I knew it would be hard to do five new things at the one time, I said to myself, what one thing, what one thing, if I nailed in the next 30 days, would have the biggest impact? And it was to get fit. And the reason why was this, that if I got fit, I'd have energy. If I got fit, I'd have confidence. If I got fit, what I'd have is self-belief. If I got fit, I'd feel like a winner. So I worked out that if I got fit, it would affect all the other goals. So that became the number one goal. So guys and girls, good to see you, Stephen Brown from the UK, one of the great real estate trainers in the UK. So that, my friends, became the most important thing, the one thing to get super, super fit and become a corporate athlete. And I'm going to urge guys and girls here on Insta, here on Facebook today, that I would say that it doesn't matter who you are or what stage in your life, that has to be in your top three. That has to be in your top three. I want to move on to question number five. And this question um, is one that became extremely important in my life. And by the way, guys and girls, if you're enjoying the content, please press that share button on that bottom of your screen or tag someone, tag someone that you know that needs to hear this next one. And that is this question. What's the gift in here? What's the gift here? What's the gift here? And I've said it before, like for me, my illness has been a gift that's badly wrapped. Why? Because what's the gift that comes out of it? The gift is that all of a sudden you wake up from a coma thinking, fuck, I'm running out of time. What does that mean? You start living life. You start getting fit. You start making money because you realize, shit, I've got kids that aren't going to be looked after if I'm not around, so I better make a heap of money to have them protected. 
I'm not gonna have a life insurance company that's gonna fucking touch, I shouldn't swear, I'm not gonna have a life insurance company that's gonna touch me. So gang, all of a sudden, I think to myself, okay, I've gotta make money and you know what? I've gotta get fit because if I've gotta go through treatment again, which I did, I'm gonna be able to handle it. So gang, I have to say to you, I have to say to you, thank you, Aaron. He says, hydrate, Tommy, time to hydrate. Mm. Okay, so gang, all I'm going to say to you, now, I even had a conversation with someone that lost a child that was only six years of age. And I said to that person, um, I mean, we spoke for about half an hour. She's someone that watches the rant. And I said to that person, um, as bad as it is, can I ask you, is there any gift at all that came out of it? And he and she, they were both together, said, um, well, you know, what, what good can come out of losing an innocent child that's done nothing, that's been taken short? And I said, um, well, put it this way. there's a lot of people that don't even actually get onto the planet. And the five and a half years you had, let me ask you this. Would you have rather not had those five and a half years with your young boy? And they said, no, we wouldn't have it any other way. And I said, so the gift is that you got five and a half years that some people won't get because they won't have a child. And um, I mean, obviously a conversation is not gonna, you know, um, um, like that, that's, a, that's a, you know, a deep issue. But I did see, you know, his partner acknowledge your head and goes, you know, that's true. So, you know, I have to say to you, like for me, um, look, I don't know. I could live to 80, I could live to 100, I could live to 55. I've got no idea, but I can tell you, you know, what's the gift? The gift is that, you know, I had this incredible ability to, you know, be able to come onto the planet to experience, which the odds of coming onto the planet are like one in 400 trillion, I think. Google it at the end of this. And you can find out, you know, how mathematical remote to actually come onto the planet. That's a fuck, that's a gift. So, gang, no matter whatever shit things happen, right? Um, I want to ask you, what's the gift in this situation? And it'll help you actually look at the positive out of something. I want to move on to number six, and then we've got one more question and we're done, and I'm going to let you go off and enjoy your family and your friends and um, whatever you want to do. Stone and wood. Number six. What does the 24th of December 2015 look like? That's a great question. That's a great question because I believe that... Um, Everything begins with a thought, and I've said to you that when you get clarity with a clear why, the what and the how show up. So what you've got to get super clear, and I'm going to ask you all over the next three, four, five days between Christmas and New Year's to write yourself a letter from the future dated the 20, you know, write yourself a letter dated the 1st of January 2019, so 12 months away. And write yourself what your life looks like physically, mentally, whether you've bought a property, where you've holidayed, you know, what car you're driving, what your body fat and mass index is, what your body fat ratio is, you know, everything in your life. I'd love you to do that. And the reason I'd love you to do that is that, you know, this letter from the future basically becomes your mission statement that you carry it around that will help you make every decision that you'll make will be aligned with that actual two-page letter. Uh, number seven, and then we're done. Number seven, and then we're done. This is a great question. I asked this question 
whenever something shit happens and I've got to make a decision. And that is, what would God do? What would God do here? What would God do? You know, ha- having said that, having said that, I don't always follow that advice because I remember this year I was at Melbourne Airport and I was rushing and I bought some sashimi at um, Tullamarine Airport and I rushed over and I rushed over and I put um, the sashimi on a table and there's another lady, there's another lady, she would have been about, I don't know, she was in 50, 60, 70, or say 60 years of age, right? And she just looks at me and she said, this is my table. I got it first. So I just want you to picture, this is at an airport in a public area. And all I did is quickly just put there so I could just eat and get onto my flight. And I said, what do you mean? She said, I put my things here on first. Now we've got a table that can fit four people. This is a sharing common area. And I just looked at her and I thought to myself, Tom, don't tell her to fuck off. Just ask, what would God do here? And you know what I did? I looked at her and I didn't follow God's advice. I said to her, let me ask you, if I put my sashimi on your car, does that make your car mine? And she just stared at me. She looked at me and she didn't know what to say. And she just went, and she just got off and walked away. So there's a classic example of me not using God's advice. I mean, by the way, just because, you know, sometimes women that are, you know, like she's 60, 65, an old lady, like she's being a fucking, she was being a bit of a bitch right there. So like sometimes you've got to put people into their places. Um, and I had to reposition her attitude in a nice way. But I think one of the things, one of the things that, you know, um, I'd like you to do is whenever you're stuck in a situation, Think to yourself, what's a genius? What would a genius do in this situation? What would Steve Jobs do with this problem? Right? Um, Or um, what would Mother Teresa do with this person? Right? Um, And for me, I have to say to you, I love my favorite of all quotes of all quotes is this. It comes from Albert Einstein. And it's pretty much this quote. It might be a little bit off. And that is, I want to think like God. Everything else is detail. And I just think to myself, that is the highest form of thinking. And as we finish this rant on this Christmas Eve, we'll finish on that point on a godly religious, spiritual note. I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and always remember, have a total attitude of gratitude. Right now, there are millions that would swap spots with me and you on where we are. The only thing is, sometimes the law of familiarity makes us forget We should be happy with what we've got until it's taken away from us. Good night and God bless.